Welcome to Children Church e-learning. Hello boys and girls. I am Coco Jason. Today, I am your tour guide for the Paul and Barnabas first missionary journey. Last Sunday, we began the tour from Antioch and ended at Paphos. Today, we will head to the second stop of the trip. So please, fasten your seat belts, open up your Bibles, and turn to Acts 13, 13 to 52 with me. From Paphos, Paul and his friends sailed to Perga, where John left them to return to Jerusalem. Later, they went on to Pisidian Antioch. On Sabbath, Paul and Barnabas went into a synagogue and shared about Jesus Christ. They reminded the Jews about how God had chosen them long ago when Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt. Then God gave them the promised land and leaders like King Saul and King David. God promised them a saviour from the line of King David. It is Jesus Christ, whom John the Baptist talked about. The people did not recognize Jesus Christ as the Savior and put him to death on the cross. But God raised Jesus from death and this is the good news for all of us today. Through Jesus, our sins are forgiven and death is defeated. After Paul and Barnabas sharing, the people invited them to continue to speak next week. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear Paul and Barnabas. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy. They began to argue with Paul and scold him. Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly, We had to speak the word of God to you first. Since you rejected, we now turn to the Gentiles. The Gentiles were happy to receive Jesus Christ as their Saviour. Then, the word of God spread around the place. Some Jewish leaders were angry and persecuted Paul and Barnabas. Paul and Barnabas left and headed to Iconium. Like Paul and Barnabas, God continues to send us on mission trips to preach the gospel in other places. It is an exciting work that first started with God. It is because God first reached out to us that now we also reach out to others. This letter is for someone staying in Aukang, this to Serangoon, and this one to Pongo. Oh hi everyone! Can you guess what my occupation is? That's right! I'm a postman! And here, I have some letters with me that need to be delivered as soon as possible. This is my job as a postman, making sure that letters and packages sent by people are delivered to the right person. I'm done with my first batch of delivery today. Time for a break. Phew! You know, this reminds me of today's Bible story about Paul and Barnabas. They were on this missionary journey. This is a big word, missionary. It refers to a person who is sent to complete a special mission given by God. A missionary teaches and shares about the gospel in a foreign country. They are like postmen, just like me, who deliver messages to people. This is what Paul and Barnabas did. They brought the gospel message to many people. So, since a missionary is like a postman, who wrote the message and who is the message for? It is God who wrote the message. Mission work starts with God. He is the one who gives the message about Jesus Christ and the mission. He also sent his son Jesus to earth as a missionary to teach the disciples and to spread the good news. Next, he sent his Holy Spirit to live in us and in the church up until today. God has placed you in your family, in your school, in your neighborhood, and in Singapore for a reason. It is to carry out His mission. You are not too young to be a missionary for God. We can reach out to our friends, neighbors, and relatives who do not know Jesus yet. We can pray for them, bless them with God's word like what Keegan did two weeks ago, and invite them to church. So, remember this. You are a missionary, and your mission field includes your home, your school, your neighborhood, Singapore, and other countries. This is our special mission from God. Oh my, look at the time. My break is over and it is time for me to continue delivering the letters. 
so that people can receive their letters in time. See you! Hello boys and girls, I am Pastor Jasmine. Thank you so much, Tete Yvonne, for teaching us about how God sends all of us as missionaries into the mission field, just like how he sent Jesus, his son, and the Holy Spirit. Today, we are going to have a mission talk show. We are going to invite some guests to join us and share with us their experiences on the mission field. So, let us welcome Pastor Dong, Papa David, and Peter Geraldine. Hello, my name is Dong. I'm the pastor of Living Century Brethren Church. How are you? Hello boys and girls, I'm Kaka David. <laughs> so, several mission trips that I've been on. Well, I think I went for a children church mission trip before. We went to Philippines for one week at the time. We ran a children's program as well as we teach the teachers how to run children church in their country. The most recent um, mission trip that I went for, I went for one month to Cambodia. And I just, um, I, we went to this school where I um, played football with the kids every day from morning to night. Then we continue playing football after in the orphanage. Yeah, so it was, a, it was really playing football every day lah, and making friends with the children and the teachers there. Yeah. Nice, can play football every day. That sounds like a very fun mission trip. Good life. I think the children were like this too. Okay. Yeah, come to Cambodia. Come to Cambodia. <laughs> okay, last but not least, we have Peter Geraldine. Hello children, I'm Sajin Geraldine. So I've been to Indonesia, Philippines and even Cambodia for mission trips. So all these trips is with the children's church team. So we are there to really share our knowledge with the people over there on how to run our children's church. You know, we, but over there, you know, I also learn a lot from the people over there. So I think I make a lot of friends, you know, wherever I go for mission trip as well. Now, before we ask them the next question, I'm going to play a very simple game with them. I will be showing each of them uh, a photo with themselves inside and they need to guess the place and the year that it was taken. It was taken at one of um, a mission trip that they've been before. Alright, are you up for the challenge? <laughs> I think you're getting uh... <laughs> wow, <laughs> Pastor Dong sounds very confident. So we'll start uh, with Pastor Dong. Is that okay? <laughs> All right, uh, let's start with Pastor Dong. Now take a look at this picture and let tell us which place, which year. East Timor. Uh huh. Which year? Twenty uh, seventeen. Twenty seventeen. Let's take a look at the answer. Yes, that's right. May twenty seventeen. Is Timor? Yeah, that was a good wow guess. Wow, oh, not bad, not bad, not bad. Okay, now let's try Coco David. Coco oh, David, are you ready? Okay, Here let's we go. go. Oh, this is the Philippines one. In which was this? Twenty twenty sixteen was it? Hey, was it twenty sixteen? Is that your final answer? Yeah, I think it's twenty sixteen. Okay, so let's review the answer. The answer is... Ta-da! 28th of April 2016 at Calibo, the Philippines. Well done! Good job, good job. Now, to Jajaradin. Jajaradin has been to a lot of trips, so maybe this one will trip her. <laughs> let's take a look at the photo. That's it, Jordan. It's over oh, here. No. You see that? So long ago! <laughs> Make a guess. I think this is either 2002? Uh-huh, 2002. Where? Kalimantan. Kalimantan. Is that your final answer? 2002 Kalimantan? I should think so. <laughs> I was 19 years old. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Geraldine recognized herself as 19 years old. Let's take the answer. It is 2009. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so long. <laughs> in Singtang, West Kalimantan. All right, but uh, that, thanks for the fun game. I think, you know, we can tell that all of us have been to so many trips and the first question that the children would like to know and find out is that why is it that uh, you go for mission trips? So we're going to start with Pastor Dong. Okay, my short answer is obedience. Our Lord has commissioned or commanded or asked us to go and make disciples of all nations to 
starting from Singapore where we do CP or community pastoring, we also need to travel to those countries outside of Singapore to go and make disciples in obedience to the Lord's great commission. Let's hear from Koko David right now. Why do you go for mission trips, Koko David? Um, I think I really like to go for mission trips to be able to use the little talent that God really has blessed me with to go and um, impart the talent to other people, hopefully to spread the talent as well as to really love people the way God has loved me. Yeah, so that's my short answer. Wow, yeah. I really like that one. Yeah, that's so good. How about the Zed Geraldine? Why do you go for mission trips? Actually, I think this word mission trip uh, came about when I attended one of the workshops that is held in our church last time. So I think during the workshop, you know, uh, actually uh, we were introduced to different ministries, you know, different kind of uh, serv- service that we can serve God. So I think one of the uh, service that, is, uh, that spoke to me is mission trip. So, yeah, so when we were discussing about mission trip, you know, something just stirred in my heart. So I believe that God, you know, has put something in my heart uh, uh, for the people in other countries as well, you know, apart from the people in Singapore. Yeah, so this is why I go for mission trip. Yeah. Wow, that's very powerful sharing. What is one thing that God has showed you in any of your mission trips? I know there are like plenty. So just <laughs> maybe we start off with just one. Uh. Pastor Dong? Well, okay. Actually, I got a lot, of, a lot to answer, but since you say one, um, the one will be God loves the people everywhere, in Singapore and outside. And He desired that none should perish or die without knowing Him. So, to me, that is my motivation for bringing teams to go and do missions overseas to help the vulnerable poor and Right, and let's hear next from uh, for God, David. What is one thing that God has shown you in any of the mission trips so far? Um, I think the one common thing that God really showed me is how it's really how simple it is to love Him and how simple it is to worship Him. Like you see, all these um, people in the villages or in the orphanages, um, like simple prayers before their meals or like simple Sunday services like just gathering around the, the person in charge listening to God's word and then just worshipping with their all their heart I think it's really showed me how much how simple it is to really love God you just need to have a willing heart and and you can just love God just with, with just that so I think that was a very very powerful thing that um, I have learned throughout all the mission trips that I've been on yeah mm, yeah that's right I yes totally and agree. amen <laughs> totally agree isn't it Thanks for that. That's right. When they start to worship, you can really feel God in your heart. Mm, yeah, that's true. I think Jerry Jardine also agree, right? Would you like to share with us also one thing that God has shown you through the trips? I think one of the things that God showed me is that we are all one big family. You know, even though we are in different countries, but we are brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, we are God's children. And I think... Um, it's such it's such an important truth because you know doesn't mean that we look different means we are uh, you know uh, different family you know but we are really one big family together and worshiping God and doing the same thing you know it, it's not that you know Singaporean do different things and then the Filipino do different things but you know whatever we do you know is uh, is to serve God. And the things that we do is is the same, and and ultimately our purpose is to love God and really to serve His people. Hmm. Yeah. Well said. Actually, really, ultimately, that's what God has called us to do: to love and to serve. So, thank you so much for your time today and sharing with all the boys and girls about your mission trip experiences. And we hope to see our boys and girls to one day being able to join us on our overseas mission trip. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, and that's it for our mission talk show today, and we'll see you soon. Wow! After hearing all this sharing by the people, I am so encouraged, and I feel like I want to go on a mission trip right now. You know, today we have learned that God sends us on mission trips so that we can preach the gospel in other places. I'm so excited to do that. 
Oh, wait, there's still COVID-19 though, and we can't travel! Ah, like what Sebae Yvonne said, even though we can't travel right now, God not only just gave us overseas mission field, He also gave us the local mission field in Singapore. And that means for you, your mission field include your school, your neighborhood, your community, and your family. And so where God has placed you here in Singapore, that is your mission field. And you can reach out to the people around you. And here is a chance for you because on the 27th of December, Children's Church is going to hold a combined Christmas service. And you can invite your friends, all your cousins, all your family members to join us on the service as long as they are aged between 4 to 11. And so start thinking about who you want to reach out to, your friends or your family members who don't know Jesus yet, and prepare to invite them on the 27th of December for our service. More details about the time and the place will be released in time to come. And today, let us carry on with our learning by doing the activity sheet either online or by printing it out. And also carry on to connect with one another by showing up either online or in person. You know, every time when you appear either on screen or in person, your smiles bring a lot of joy to people around you. So carry on to do that. Here are the smiling faces of the Zoom session last week. And I'll see you really soon. Bye-bye.